Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Unbelievable, says Ian Bintz here. Jim Cramer, only six days ago, this is actually from the 14th of March. Listen to this. And I would sell my Bitcoin right into this rally. And believe me, I had been a believer one time in Bitcoin. Not here, not now. No, not here, not now. Really, Jim? We are just starting this Bitcoin rally. Right now, Bitcoin's trading at $28,000 per coin. Uh, you know, we have seen the first inclinations of the market recovering. 2022 was obviously a bear year. Uh, you know, something to be expected after a couple of very bullish years throughout 2020 and 2021. Yet Jim Cramer has the audacity to tell us to sell into these green candlesticks when we've only just begun seeing this trend turn around. The Bitcoin fear and greed index is at 66. I mean, kind of uh, halfway middle ground at this point in time. I mean, we have seen it higher. We have seen it lower at points. Uh, people are getting excited for a renewed bull rally for uh, the crypto market as a whole. 28,000, as I mentioned, uh, for Bitcoin right now, throwing that on the hourly. You guys can see we've uh, over the last uh, day or so, a few days now, we've just kind of been trading sideways. Although, uh, you know, looking at this in the longer time frame, going back to the daily, uh, as I've mentioned uh, yesterday and the day before, we have now breached this level of resistance here, which was uh, 25,200. And now we are forming what is looking like resistance on this old support level from back in May. So 28,500, I believe that's where that is. No, that is 20. 7,000 or 28,000 give or take so we're just kind of hovering around there right now and uh, I mean we need to see a strong move through that the next uh, level would be about 32,003 so let me just uh, bring up another horizontal line here getting above this former level of resistance here from back in May that would certainly demonstrate more confidence in the king crypto $32,300 per coin that is the next target what's going on for XRP well XRP Eh, relatively flat. I mean, not too much to write home about for XRP. Nevertheless, uh, we have seen some renewed confidence over the last day or so. We did see a bit of a downturn. Now buyers are getting more interested right now. XRP sitting at about 39 cents even. So we have been seeing uh, XRP moving slowly but surely to the upside. I mean, this is still looking like what I like to call that Nike swoosh pattern. So we are moving upward out of this. OK, usually what that leads to is a big send off to the upside and even just zooming out, uh, you guys can see that uh, we haven't really gone and stayed below that 30 cent mark. So a huge departure from uh, 2019, 2020 and even in uh, early 2021 before XRP saw that most recent high of about $1.96 per coin. All in due time, guys, all in due time. Uh, wanted to bring this up because there is a scam going on. And uh, I've been noticing this in my uh, in the comments on Twitter. I go to a tweet and, uh, you know, there's usually a comment that I cannot see the commenters tweet. And I'm thinking to myself, are people blocking me? What the heck's going on? Well, no, it's apparently a scam. I went to this uh, account here, India News 24, their Twitter account here. And uh, apparently they've, uh, looks like they've blocked everybody, or at least they blocked me, blocking people that uh, I guess could call them out on their BS. So India's News 24, it is uh, another crypto uh, Twitter account that has been hacked. And uh, guys, they are posting fake XRP airdrop giveaways. So just be careful here as it is standard. These posts pretend to be an official Ripple event and even feature the crypto company CEO Brad Garlinghouse in their previews. It is important to remember that neither Ripple nor anyone else arranges any XRP airdrops and all such offers to switch to dubious sites are highly likely to be fraudulent. So guys, again, uh, just be careful. Be mindful if you do see an offer like this uh, that is too good to be true. Chances are it is. So if you see any responses or any uh, tweets here from this uh, Twitter handle here, News24 TV channel, probably a good idea to report and block them. I want to keep moving along, guys. Saw this from Michael Branch. According to a fresh weekly report from CoinShares on fund flows into crypto-oriented investment products, guess where we're seeing some of the highest, guys? Inflows into those tied to XRP rose more than 33% in the last week. In the past seven days, they have reached 400,000, which brings the year-to-date net flow figure to $1 million. Uh, only investment products focusing on Polymatic, Solana, and short Bitcoin, which are betting on a fall in Bitcoin price, 
were able to show the same results or better. Uh, this is despite the fact that there have now been 177 million outflows from this sector of the financial market since the beginning of the year, which represents about 40.87% of the total net flows for the entirety of 2022. So we are seeing an increase for XRP, 33% in the last week. Uh, just the other day, we talked a little bit about the 420 million XRP bought by Massive Whales. As they brace potentially for something big, maybe this uh, Nike swoosh pattern, maybe we're at the end Maybe we're at uh, closer to the end of it than I thought. We are getting indications that net inflows are up, so I wanted to thank Michael for posting that. And our man in Florida against CBDCs, he appears not to be aligned with the WEF agenda. This uh, retweeted out from uh, Esoteric XRP here. Ron DeSantis wants laws to expressly forbid the use of central bank digital currencies in Florida and calls on other U.S. states to do the same. Here he is, guys, the governor of Florida. Ultimately, cash is king. I mean, if you can hold it in your hand, you have power over that. The minute it's all digitized, somebody else is going to have control over that. And it's just a question of, are they going to let you live your life? Are they going to decide to do things uh, to circumvent uh, what you want to do? And think about what we've already seen in Canada. You remember when the truckers were protesting the vax mandates you know, they had banks, some of the, the government seized some of, froze some of their banks. You had charities that were trying to help these guys, and that was frozen. So we've already seen government really overstep its bounds as it is in the, in the banking situation and financial sector that we have now. Can you imagine if we went to something like a central bank digital currency? So I'm glad that we're uh, at the tip of the sphere on this. I think it's really important that states stand up to fight back against some of the things um, that are going on, well, most of the things that are going on right now in Washington, uh, because they don't have your best interests at heart. Uh, they have their own power at heart. Uh, they have their own agenda that they're looking to advance. And so I think this will be great legislation. I look forward. We're already talking to the leaders in the legislature. I think this is something that is going to happen, and I look forward to being able to sign it into law uh, later this year. Gotta love DeSantis. I gotta say, I've been spending some time in Florida over the last couple of years. And I mean, if they are looking to ban central bank digital currencies in the state of Florida, obviously that means, uh, well, in my opinion, that Ron DeSantis wants to be on the right side of history. Cash is king, as he said. Uh, you know, do not relinquish your cash. Uh, you know, the government obviously has their own mandates that they want to pursue a control mechanism. Uh, he also gives the example of the Canadian truckers bank accounts being frozen. So all things to consider guys. And I got to say that was refreshing to see this morning. Michael Branch also bringing this up with regards to MasterCard. They have entered a collaboration that would allow retail customers in the APAC region to spend their stable coins anywhere MasterCard is accepted. So, you know, just along those lines of uh, really kind of expanding and uh, leveraging, utilizing cryptocurrencies for spending. Now, this is an interesting one because it has to do with stable coins and MasterCard. So not uh, spending your crypto per se, but I guess if you're spending a stable coin, that would be the equivalent to a US dollar or uh, some other type of fiat. The collaboration involves a stable coin only wallet built by Stables coming with a payment card supported by MasterCard. The payment card enables users to save and spend USDC coins. So that would be the stable coin that they are uh, that they are supporting by converting the digital currency into fiat and settling on MasterCard's network. So taking the USDC coin and I guess uh, settling to uh, whatever fiat uh, currency is being accepted in whatever country you're using MasterCard in, the card will be accessible through the Stables digital application via mobile wallets. That almost seems a little bit redundant. I don't know why you wouldn't just spend your uh, USDC directly. I guess that would be more like a debit card. Anyway, don't really know the details on this, but uh, more crypto integration this time with stable coins coming from the MasterCard camp. We're also seeing Stellar guys partnering with Transfer2, so another crypto company looking to enhance the way money is transferred across borders. This one from Mr. Man here, bringing us some documentation, enabling economic inclusion and participation for all with a focus on emerging markets. This has to do with Transfer2 operating in 160 countries. Transfer2 has partnered with Stellar.org to enhance the way money is transferred across borders. Under this collaboration, financial institutions and partners of both companies hope to benefit from the combined network coverage and the ability to leverage new technologies to send and receive money more efficiently to over 70 countries. 
Now it is looking here like this is uh, not a new partnership, nevertheless, reminding us where the technology is going. This is a brand new one though. Ripple partner and payments technology outfit ACI Worldwide is in talks with private equity firm Motive Partners about a possible sale. So Motive has been looking to secure financing for this acquisition. Uh, publicly listed ACI has a market value of around $2.5 billion. The deal has not been finalized and talks could still fall through. The talks come two years after Barron's reported that ACI had called in Goldman Sachs to help with a possible sale. So this Ripple enabled company, and this is a bit of an anomaly. Usually it is the Ripple enabled companies that are looking to buy other companies. But in this case, uh, Motive is looking to uh, purchase ACI. Uh, you know, it sounds as though they are having some kind of issues uh, and are now uh, have called in Goldman Sachs, but worth $2.5 billion. So obviously uh, they do see that there is value there. Even if they do get sold, I mean, this is not necessarily bad news for the XRP ecosystem. All these companies do provide value in one way, shape or form. So, I mean, all things considered, it would be interesting to see what motive decides to do next. If in fact, this does uh, work out and if they are able to uh, purchase ACI. So some interesting news here. Wanted to thank Mike for posting that. Now, I know you guys probably saw this from James K. Filan, and I know, uh, you know, everybody's heart tends to skip a beat as soon as James uh, posts on Twitter, because it's usually always about the Ripple SEC lawsuit. Well, here's the latest, guys. Ripple defendants file letter notice of supplemental authority and further support of their fair notice defense. It's the decision of Judge Michael Wiles in the Voyager bankruptcy case where Judge Wiles rejected the SEC's objections and approved the bankruptcy plan. So the latest guys coming out just yesterday uh, afternoon, defendants Ripple Labs, Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson respectfully submit this notice of supplemental authority relevant to their opposition uh, to the SEC's motion. On March the 11th, Judge Michael Wiles of the U.S. Bankruptcy Court did issue a ruling in the Voyager case, and it is attached herein. Voyager concerned the bankruptcy of Voyager Digital, a digital asset brokerage company. Under the proposed bankruptcy plan, Voyager would sell its assets, including a digital asset called VGX, uh, to the exchange Binance.us. The SEC objected to the plan, arguing that VGX had aspects of a security without specifying what those aspects were. It further objected that Binance.us was an unregistered securities exchange without specifying why the SEC staff thought so. Uh, Judge Wiles rejected the SEC's objections and approved the bankruptcy plan. His basis for rejecting those objections endorsed many of the arguments defendants have raised here. First, Judge Wiles rebuked the SEC attorneys for the vagueness of their objections, noting that the SEC had not offered any guidance at all as to what uh, it was that the debtors allegedly were supposed to prove uh, in order to show that VGX was not a security. And second, just as defendants have highlighted in connection with their fair notice defense, Judge Wiles found that cryptocurrency market participants operate in a regulatory environment that at best can be described as highly uncertain in which regulators themselves cannot seem to agree as to whether cryptocurrencies are commodities that may be subject to regulation by the CFTC or whether they are securities that may be subject to uh, securities laws by the SEC. In a nutshell, guys, I will link this in the description of the video if you want to read the full thing. And so Ripple has come out and now they are filing another uh, amendment. Swear to God, I thought this was the official ruling by the judge. I was about to scream and take the rest of the week off. As many of us are, uh, you know, still currently waiting for Tipsy Tiger down here. Well, it's undeniably helpful. There needs to be a fine line in pissing a judge off. I hope this doesn't cross it. Uh, so many speculating. What is this going to mean? Eleanor Turret here posting this for those not in the XRP community. If Judge Torres comes back with a decision on summary judgment in the Ripple case this week, one of three things could happen. She could side with Ripple, one. She could side with the SEC, two. Or she could decide the case should go to trial. And uh, I think this is, you know, where we're all kind of wondering, scratching our head, okay, is it going to be speedy, swift, or is this going to get dragged out even longer? Uh, Karen Kelly down here saying, Eleanor, can you find out the deal before it goes public and tweet it out, please? Kenny Nguyen, Ripple for the win. Shaman Lab down here, given the shocking admissions of Hester Peirce regarding the SEC recently on Bankless, I did not uh, actually see that podcast. Maybe I should check out that episode. The insane bank run situation and ridiculous finger pointing at the entire cryptocurrency community. As a result, the pragmatic postures of Brad Garlinghouse, Ripple, the easily understandable utility of XRP and other real blockchain companies are statement to the U.S., uh, and the world will truly be epic and absolutely inform the USA's leadership or lack thereof position 
in this massively important emerging technology and worldwide talent vacuum. No pressure or anything, Honorable Judge Torres. So, you know, shining the spotlight on Judge Torres on what is going to happen next. Real XRP boy adding his two cents as if Torres waited for Ripple to file. Hmm, maybe she knows exactly what's going on and is sick and tired of all the bull crap going on like the rest of us and wants nothing more but a level playing field herself for her and her loved ones. Time will tell. And so he uh, retweeted out Jeremy Hogan's response, which I will be getting to in a second here. First, though, John Deaton. I'm hoping Judge Torres was already very aware of the ruling by Judge Wiles of the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for the Southern District of New York, same district as Judge Torres. So that's an interesting point that uh, we should probably be making here in the Voyager bankruptcy. Ripple offers the ruling in further support of its fair notice defense. So I guess we should talk a little bit about that, right? Um, you know, judges in similar districts or the same district, because this is literally the exact same district, usually I would assume know each other, probably discuss cases and uh, maybe even be buddy-buddy. So, I mean, I wonder, I guess, if this is going to have a positive effect on the case or not. Uh, John Deaton continues, if Judge Torres is the ongoing working draft of her decision, criticizes the SEC's approach and inconsistent behaviors and attitude towards digital assets, she can cite to the Voyager ruling as further corroborative evidence of her criticism. And uh, I feel like this is probably where she is going with this. The ongoing working draft. Maybe she hasn't made up her mind yet. And maybe she needed this ruling or maybe she needed, uh, you know, some kind of impetus to, uh, you know, add to her ruling something that would in fact squash the SEC. I predicted over a year ago that Judge Torres will rule in favor of Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson. I believe Judge Torres will rule that no reasonable jury could conclude that the two executives were reckless in not knowing XRP was a security when the SEC itself didn't know. So that was the, uh, you know, the first thing. Uh, I guess Brad and Chris's lawsuit, we know that's separate from uh, the bigger lawsuit at hand that is going to concern XRP hodlers. John Dean did predict this back in February of 22. The case against Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson is over. Uh, it was over the day it was filed. There's no way the SEC can meet its burden. The SEC must prove the two executives had actual knowledge XRP was a security or reckless in not knowing. Petit Crabeau du Bitume down here saying, the question is not if it will be favorable, but when. We have lost too much time with Judge Netburn and begins to be long with Judge Torres. I know it is a tiring process, except for the small problem that the entire political and financial systems are corrupt, this coming from Philly Special 2.0, and feels like some of the judicial system is too, but if logic and justice prevail by any chance, I agree with your prediction. I mean, John Deaton has been uh, bang on with some of these predictions. So, I mean, I guess time will tell. I think we are seeing a strategic move here, guys. Finally, Jeremy Hogan saying Ripple has finally filed the Voyager bankruptcy judge's decision. And note what he says here. The judge uses abnormally strong language, stating that the U.S. regulators themselves cannot even agree on the criteria to use in deciding whether crypto is a security, which is, in fact, fair notice. He then says we are getting close. So devil is in the details, guys, noting the abnormally strong language by the judge. Uh, Shaman Lab down here saying, thanks for this interpretation, Jeremy. As always, your input is crucial to our whole community. Either popping corks or buying diapers. Does this little morsel change your prediction outcome percentages in your epic latest-ish video or last-ish video? Cheers, brother. Uh, and Jeremy Hogan saying, for me, the Dobert ruling just increased the chance of the case going to a jury trial. I still don't think it will. But a couple of things in there made it seem more likely. Thanks, Jeremy. How about on whether... Or not, she rules favorably on certain issues in the case, like XRP being a security or not. We do not have a response there. Johnny Bravo also asking, what's interesting is we have not seen a request to strike for the first letter. Uh, now let's see if the SEC requests a strike for the second letter. So the SEC not uh, even, it doesn't even seem like they're putting in the effort anymore. I find that very odd considering they know a decision could happen any minute now. They don't seem to be in a hurry. Isn't that suspicious, Jeremy Hogan responding? It is strange that they never replied to the prior case law. I cannot explain it. And so here we have it, guys. The wait, still excruciating, but getting some insight from Jeremy Hogan, from John Deaton, the strong language that the judge used. Jeremy Hogan even mentioning that the Dobert ruling itself just increased the chances of the case going to jury trial. He doesn't think it will. However, those odds just went up. One thing is for certain, though, guys, we are getting very, very close to a verdict, and I'm also hoping we're getting very, very close to the end of this Nike swoosh pattern. That's just my opinion, though. I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. 
See you in the next one, guys.